be delighted to have this opportunity to introduce Minister Jamie Hepburn. And if we think about the world of careers and we think about young people and adults need relevant work experience, well, I'm just going to pick out a couple of key points um, from Minister Hepburn's, um, his own career journey. Uh, studied at the University of Glasgow, graduated in, a, in politics and history. Um, so he's actually uh, put into practice the theory uh, that he's learned at university. But he's been the Minister for Sport, Health, Improvement and Mental Health uh, back in 2014. He was appointed the Minister for Employability and Training in 2016 and appointed the Minister for Business, Fair Work and Skills in 2018. And he supports the Cabinet Secretary for Economy, Fair Work and Culture and the Deputy First Minister. I'm sure I may have missed out a few other things, um, uh, Minister Hepburn, but um, just really over to you in terms of your key message for this conference. And thank you so much for making the time in your busy schedule to join us. Well, thank you, Deirdre, for that uh, introduction and uh, many thanks for giving only the highlights of uh, my uh, career so far. Um, I always get a little nervous when someone says they're going to give my biography in case any great secrets are given away, but you managed to keep most of them, so I'm very grateful uh, for that. But I also want to begin, I think it's important for me to let everyone uh, know, Deirdre, that you have played a, an influential role in the work that we've taken forward in our own career strategy as a Scottish uh, government because of course you uh, were giving us and providing us that expertise and support in taking forward that strategy and so your assistance was was greatly valued and uh, just before I get into the, the meat of what I want to uh, say today I wanted to, to place on record uh, my sincere thanks to you for the assistance you have uh, brought. Uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, being with you uh, today enables me uh, to first of all set out that I am enormously proud that in, in Scotland we have a career sector which is internationally regarded as uh, world leading, one of the best in the world, many other uh, nations praising uh, our uh, long term commitment to the vital services that the career sector uh, provides. Uh, this year, of course, has for each and every one of us, and of course, uh, we are an international gathering today, so this holds true irrespective of where whether you're talking from Scotland as I am or any other part of the world, this year has of course been a truly exceptional one. This has been a period that has touched the lives of each and every one of us. And with that, the economic landscape that we now find ourselves in has changed and is continuing to change dramatically. We face new and unprecedented challenges. Our young people, uh, alongside the disruption to their schooling and everyday uh, life, uh, received uh, their qualifications here in Scotland without sitting exams which they had expected and been preparing for all uh, year. I, I am and I think we can all be enormously proud of the resilience that they have shown during these most testing of times. Uh, we know though that the, the economic shock from the response to trying to contain the, the spread of COVID-19 has resulted in people losing their employment and having to look for other alternative forms of work, perhaps having to consider other sectors they have no experience of, having to develop new skill sets. And we know that as we move forward, it, we're going to see numbers of people in such circumstances increasing further still. So that's why in our own uh, programme for government, uh, we committed uh, to uh, delivering a, a new uh, careers uh, strategy to set the, the vision for a, a coherent, high quality career information, advice and uh, guidance service, which is accessible uh, to all and which will support people to deal with the world in which we find ourselves in today. The value and uh, requirement of good quality careers information, advice and guidance services is always been important, but never more so than it is today. We live in a, a fast paced, ever changing world. With those trends underway even before 
at this global pandemic, demographic change here in Scotland and indeed across the United Kingdom, the UK's withdrawal from the European Union, and above all, and that great global challenge, one of the accelerated pace of technological advance. So we cannot afford to rest on our laurels. More young people here in Scotland are staying on in education than before, and more young people are leaving in more highly qualified. There are more education and training opportunities available, meaning more choices and decisions need to be made. And for both young people and adults, the, the labour market is becoming increasingly fluid and changing at a, a rapid pace. Technological advancements are enabling new ways of working, and that's led the OECD to estimate that in the UK alone, one-third of jobs can be expected to either disappear or radically change as a result of automation over the next 10 to 15 years. So individuals need to be equipped with both the skills and resilience to be able to respond with the knowledge and talent that employers need. I think we all recognise the, the now immediate need to ensure that the careers advice sector is, is flexible and ready to adapt to the economic shock and exceptional circumstances we find ourselves in. That's why high quality, impartial career information, advice and guidance has never been so important for all individuals, regardless of the stage in their career journey. That period in any person's life can be confusing and daunting in normal climates. But at this moment in time, being faced with choices of which path to take in your career journey is even more challenging. But that's where careers guidance comes into its own. As you know, good quality career services can transform lives. They can open people's eyes to their own potential and the opportunities that are open to them, not just at the beginning of their entry into the world of work, but at all stages of their lives. In short, such services give people the skills and confidence to understand and adapt. So with this in mind, the Scottish Government launched their new career strategy moving forward on the 18th of February of this year. At that stage, not realising just quite how vital and immediate the need for this support would really be. The strategy was developed in collaboration with the sector through a steering group comprising of experts and practitioners from across the Scottish careers sector. The strategy sets out our collective ambition for a, an ever more coherent and aligned system that people can access throughout their life. This development approach ensured all delivery partners could influence the process of developing a strategy and create a vision for the careers system with a sense of shared ownership and shared purpose. Bringing together partners who otherwise may not have spent so much time considering each other's perspectives and pressures enhance the trust and partnership working that exists between strategic and delivery partners. And it's essential that we have that approach continuing to make the best of the resources we have and to successfully implement our strategy. The career services can help challenge people's perceptions and consider careers paths that for a host of reasons they have previously discounted. So people must know about the services that are available and they must know how to access them. For people already in work, this is vitally important. They can understand and take advantage of emerging opportunities and reskill where required. We are seeking to create an inclusive system that leaves no one behind, regardless of age, regardless of location, regardless of their circumstances. We will work together to ensure all those who provide career support, employability and skills development in Scotland shape their services around the needs of the individual. That must be the starting point, I believe, in any public service, of course, but careers advice is no exception. Our strategy brings together everyone who can help us achieve our vision to support the economy 
of today and also the labour market of tomorrow. Our ambition is for an approach to career support, employability support and skills development that focuses on the needs of the individual first and foremost. A system that builds on an individual's skills and capabilities, a system that is more joined up and a system which enables everyone to fulfil their full potential. Crucial in helping to achieve the strategy's vision is the four high level ambitions and principles that it has set out. A national model for delivery, collaborative working, a progressive approach to quality assurance and improved outcomes, and the establishment of a pan sectoral leadership body. These four principles will help to ensure that every individual in Scotland has access to high quality, impartial, and free information, advice, and guidance. The strategy sets out the rationale for change and the ways in which we can move forward outcomes the strategy seeks to influence. It will establish that new leadership group with representation across multiple sectors. This group will develop plans for how the strategy's vision will be realised in the many settings that career services can be accessed. This will be developed in response to the current circumstances in which we find ourselves helping to support those who are leaving school or further in higher education in truly exceptional times. And for those who find themselves unexpectedly changing career as a result of redundancy as well, of course. We are now pushing ahead to the implementation phase of the strategy process. We are establishing that leadership body consisting of representation from right across the sector. The group will develop an implementation plan, which will then be published in due course. And I look forward to working with that group as we continue to enhance and build its services. We will consult with equality groups and service users throughout the implementation phase to ensure that we are considering how the delivery of services can help address equality issues and deliver on other Scottish government commitments. Our other medium long-term goal is around working collaboratively to enhance digital services to fully reflect the needs of service users of all ages, and including greater alignment between the different digital service platforms that exist to ensure that people are directed seamlessly to the portal or service that best fits their circumstances and best fits their needs. Looking further into the future, we will support the adoption of a, a national model of delivering career services by all partners, and that services delivered are quality assured and adopt agreed shared principles, language, and with a focus on personal development. This will bring consistency, coherence, and greater strategic direction to careers delivery. And we also want to embed a, a continuous improvement approach to delivering future service enhancements across the system, ensuring accountability, sustainability, and we deploy resources effectively across the employment system. We are fortunate that we are entering the implementation phase and can shape uh, the actions with the current climate at the forefront of our response. And in that regard, you can be assured that I recognise the value career services bring to our society, to our economy, and above all, to our people, the difference they can make to the quality of people's lives and how now more than ever, they can help individuals and their economy to respond and recover. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Well, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, I know how busy uh, you are. And uh, just on behalf of our audience today, just to say a, a very big thank you. Uh, Minister, you'll be pleased to hear that uh, tomorrow morning, uh, just before our um, keynote presentation uh, from Dr. Anthony Mann from the OECD, we've actually got someone who's going to, um, again, sort of flesh out some of the detail around what's going on in Scotland. And certainly on the world stage, I think um, just looking at the chat facility and some of the things that people have said, that they would definitely agree with you that uh, your approach is progressive. 
and uh, really groundbreaking. So to commend you and all your officials and the people around you, all the, the partners. So thank you. I know you have another um, engagement uh, to go to, Minister. So um, thanks once again. And um, I look forward to, to meeting up perhaps uh, uh, more face to face um, at some stage in the not too distant future. Stay safe and well and keep up your really important work. Thank you. Thank you.